<laughs> All right, so back again. <laughs> um, so this is me times two. I may do a few more videos in the same outfit, but just a disclaimer, when I do feel well and I try to do as many back to back. So if you see me in this outfit again, yes, she does take showers. All right. So I did a video um, about, and hopefully by now it has posted, about my review of Black Panther, the movie Black Panther. Um, but I wanted to do a follow-up because in order, I felt in order to do it justice, I really needed to kind of talk. There were so many things going on in that movie and so many things to see and absorb and, and, and you know, start a discussion with that I, I felt one video would not give it justice. So I wanted to, I left off on the other video and I kind of left off about Killmonger, who, again, spoiler, please, a spoiler alert. So if you have not seen the video, please do not, do not listen any further. Please turn off the channel. Just a bit. Okay. So, so, um, so spoiler alert, basically the, there's some things that stood out to me and that really yeah, got me. Um, Killmonger. Okay. I'll be honest with you. I totally did not. And I left off on this video with this thought. I did not expect to feel sorry for him whatsoever. He was clearly to be the anti-hero. Some people call him a villain, however you choose to call him. He clearly, um, was meant to be the bad guy, if you will. So I'm going to be honest, normally I don't feel bad for the bad guy. It's rare. You got to do some real good acting. You have to have a very great backstory as to what makes me feel that I should feel sorry for you. You know, um, and I'll tell you one of the people that I did feel sorry for was Loki. Uh, hopefully I'm Loki, Loki, Loki from Thor, Thor's brother. See, I'm bad at pronouncing names. Don't hold it against me. But Thor's brother. I felt bad for him, you know, and I was rooting for him. Like I wanted him to come back again and be redeemed. I felt he could have been redeemed. So I was glad when he came back and was like, yes, you have been redeemed. You know what I'm saying? Um, spoiler alert on that movie. If you haven't seen that. <laughs> um, so, um, this, this Killmonger guy got me in the same sense of that, where I was knowing I'm not supposed to like anything about him, that he shouldn't have any redeemable qualities. And yet I felt he did, you know, um, it was so many things going on with this guy. Um, from the start, I felt that he was, uh, you know, kind of tossed to the side, you know, personally, when his father killed the uncle, I don't, uh, the uncle drew a gun to kill, uh, you know, the, who was, who ended up being the shaman, if you will, guy, um, the advisor, a shaman type person. Um, um, I still felt if you're the Black Panther, you didn't have to kill your brother. I felt he could have just knocked the gun out of his hand and arrested his brother and kept him arrested. I, I didn't know if he had to kill him. I, I don't know if I still am 100% convinced that that should have been done because I still feel his brother had a good heart. He was just doing something in a way that, um, you know, made no sense. I mean, I mean, I'm not going to say made any sense, but I think arming people with the guns and violence on violence, you know, we could get all into the whole theory and philosophy of does violence work to overcome oppression. We could get all into that. I'm not going to get into that. But all I'm saying is I've still felt he had a good heart. I think he may have been misguided in what he was trying to do and how he's trying to do it, but I don't know if he needed to die. So I'm not interested with, with that. So the father kills his brother and then he leaves this little boy. He just leaves him. He abandons him to basically raise himself, okay, um, in America. And I didn't like that. I think that the father made a grave mistake. And I was so glad when T'Challa, in the end, you know, when he goes to second visit, you <clears throat> know, crosses over to the ancestral homeland. And he tells his dad, I mean, he's like full of rage and he's yelling at, you know, well, not yelling because that's, disrespectful but you know what I mean I mean he's passionate he's like you did wrong and I'm going to tell you that you did wrong you handled this situation like horribly and because of this you've now created a monster in Killmonger a monster that the next generation his generation has to fight and deal with you created a monster here and I think 
the dad wasn't thinking of dad was like okay well i've got to hide this this can never be known by the people wakanda forever um and and everything for the good of the people i okay i kind of get that mentality but this one life really did matter <laughs> so i i really feel that he should have taken that little boy with him had he taken the little boy with him and, and introduced him back into his, his, his roots or culture, if you will, maybe we would have had a different outcome with this little boy. But instead, this little boy, I don't know what he saw. I don't know the beginnings of his life. I'm assuming he went from group home to group home, could have been beaten, I don't know, molested. I don't know what happened. But we find out that eventually he's a CIA agent and he's killing people. And for each kill, he's, which is actually, uh, I believe, a tradition. Uh, 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 a sign of a tradition, those markings that he had on his body. He took those markings, he translated it into something else, which, you know, and then he became Killmonger. He, he, he made, took something tribal and ancestral and turned it into something maybe not quite as, I don't know, good, I guess, if you could say. Um, so this, so this is what we got, you know, so, but he feels like, hey, I, I, I should be able to claim my homeland. I want to know my homeland. I want to claim it. He goes in. It's like, hi, auntie. <laughs> you know, he's obviously being disrespectful. They're disrespecting him because they don't recognize or know their own people, you know, and so their disrespect and disdain is 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 uh, crazy. Um, and but he's also just as disrespectful back. So we have two groups of people very disrespectful. He's hurt and angry that he's abandoned. He feels Hey, you guys did nothing to help the black Americans who are suffering. You got all this stuff here and you could have helped us and you didn't help us. Um, and they're looking at him like you were uncouth. You don't know your history. We don't recognize you. You are a disgrace to us as a people. We don't even see you. We, we can't even recognize you. And so we've got these two these two things going on here at the same time, you know, so I personally, had he come in and had I known who he was, which T'Challa did, I would have told my family point blank period, he's one of us. Before it got all out of hand and insults back and forth between him and the family, I, as T'Challa, I would have said, this is my cousin. He is X, Y, Z. He is one of us. We wouldn't have had to go through all this craziness, which only hyped up the whole craziness um, and made everybody more angry, angry you know, made everyone angrier. Um, so I felt that could have been squashed a little bit better and by T'Challa knowing who this guy is. Don't play the game of you don't deserve to be here. You know he deserves to be here. You know who he is. You know, I'm not saying I, what are you gonna do? Split the split the uh, chair in half, and you rule one half of the chair, and I rule the other half. I mean, obviously that would not have worked. Being the Killmonger's coming in and saying, "I want it all, baby, give it to me." Um, so that wouldn't have worked. But what I'm just saying is, I think it could have been handled smoothly uh, on, on the side of T'Challa getting him back into his roots and calming down. And then, and I would have apologized. I am sorry for what my people have done to you. I am sorry for what happened. And I'm not saying saying you're sorry to this guy who's been through God only knows what and is so full of hate and anger at this point and rage. I don't know if that would have stopped him. I don't know if Killmonger would have accepted that and said, okay, cool, I'm going to play, you know, play my role. Well, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe he would have kept on losing his mind. <laughs> my hair is all over the place. But all I'm saying is I would have made that attempt to reach out an olive branch, if you will, because the boy was wronged. However we choose to look at it or spin it, he was wrong. He was wronged. Okay, so not to justify his, you know, you know, intent, but I'm just saying he was wronged. And let's just start with that fact. And I think healing starts with admitting I was wrong. That's what it starts with, you know, point blank period. Take that, I take that as a lesson. You know, healing starts with first admitting that you were wrong. However, whenever, whatever, just say, hey, I screwed up or whoever screwed up, I'm going to apologize for him. So I was glad in the end, though, T'Challa, he doesn't do it the revolutionary way that Killmonger was going, where I'm going to get all the weapons and we're going to give people weapons and we're going to fight the powers that be. We're going to we're going to go after, you know, these people and get our homeland back. I um, T'Challa decides to go about it, if you will, in a different way. 
um, where instead of arming people with weapons for violence, it seems as though he's arming people with knowledge. He's giving people, you know, uh, giving them schooling. He's giving them better housing. He's, you know, really trying to help uplift them so that they can um, be viable in this world and in, in their own communities. And, and so it's just a different way of looking at things. You know, some people will say, well, you can't say which either way is right or wrong. You can't judge. Um, you got to put yourself in other people's shoes and why would they resort to do this type of stuff? Um, so it was interesting to see the two different ways to handle it. Either I can get a gun and I'm going to go out and I'm going to make stuff happen that way, or I'm going to arm my people with knowledge in, in this way. So, 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 you know, so it's kind of like that. So I kind of lean more towards T'Challa's way of looking at it, um, of let's just try to reboot ourselves. Let's get back to the tradition and the knowledge and the power that we already have. And we just need to use that. And then not only that, let us not, because, you know, when you first meet T'Challa and, and, and even his the advisor guy, the one who played uh, in the movie Get Out, they were talking about taking in refugees at one point. And the, and the gentleman who played, um, the, the actor who played in Get Out, he says, we don't want to take anybody. They bring their problems. They bring this. We don't want refugees here. You know, it's almost like, um, you know, we got all this stuff here, but we're going to keep it for ourselves and we don't want to help anyone. And I kind of, I kind of was like, ah, I don't know about that. Like, I don't know if, if we should just keep everything to ourselves and not help the less fortunate. You know what I'm saying? And yes, there's a risk with that. You you open yourself up to, okay, well, here we have vibranium, and then maybe everyone just comes and takes it from you, and it gets in the wrong hands. So I can understand the caution of wanting to let people in, but, uh, and I, I don't know, maybe it's, it's uh, you know, maybe there's a way they could do it to let people in and help people without it costing so much. But I do see at the end, T'Challa, you know, so I guess Killmonger's legacy is he did change T'Challa's heart uh, to where T'Challa in the end is like, you know what? He was right about this. People are suffering. We do have the means to help. There has to be a way to help that doesn't put us in danger or jeopardy. And in the end, we see T'Challa speaking to the UN. So T'Challa took it even a step further. Instead of just saying, well, we're only going to help people of color all around the world who need help. We're going to help everyone. So at the UN, it's a representation of everyone in the world, not just people of color. So he took it a step further in saying, you know, we want to help everyone in the world. And I kind of like that theory of being more open-minded to accepting other people and wanting to help other people. Um, I tell you a scene that really got me with Killmonger, um, uh, you know, some scenes that pulled at my heart with him. I mean, he played the role very well to where I was feeling sorry for him. Um, when he was dying, uh, when he first got stabbed, he actually looked like a little boy. His face to me reminded me of a little boy. And I saw him as what he would have been, a young, innocent, before any of that crap, you know, had happened to him. You know, and he was... He was at the stage where he could have been molded to be someone different. And instead, he, his life was interrupted with this moment. And we see how an interruption, one interruption, and I'm not downplaying the death of his father, but you see how an interruption could kind of sometimes steer people off the track, and it did to him. Um, and then when he said, you know, I was hoping he could have been redeemed. I really was. I was hoping that he could have been bought back and find his place within the organization. But when he said, I'd rather... Uh, you guys could say it better than me. I don't know the exact, remember the exact words, but basically he'd rather die. He said he'd basically rather die than to be locked up, you know, and basically be a slave. He'd rather jump off the ship, if you will, uh, which some slaves chose to do. Um, and I knew then that he would not be rehabilitated, or if you will. Um, and I don't even like saying rehabilitated because I don't think all of his views were wrong. I don't think him wanting to help people was wrong. I just, uh, you know, it's just the way he was going about it. It was the way he was thinking. It was the way he was going about it, um, you know, and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So it's, he's a conflicting character. 
Because in one point, I'm like, ah, you're taking this too far. And then the other part is, well, you did have a point there, <laughs> you know. Um, but I, I cried. I actually cried when he died. I could not believe it. I was sitting there with tears down my face. And I said, this guy, he probably had a future, you know, ahead of himself before something interrupted his life. So, you know, what do you guys think about that, about Killmonger? I mean, was he good, bad, in the middle? I mean...